We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found evidence of the first prehistoric wind instruments. Ancient souls we recollect, crude tools in hand, roughened faces, primitive lives. Yet beneath our projections, ghosts of music dance like fleeting dreams, an echo of melodies carved from hollowed bone to lie in stillness beneath the stifling dirt. Exhumations reset the tone, a broken window to melodic misheard pasts, where roughened faces tame the air, flattering birds, luring game, and trading worlds. Distant voices in the wind revel once more in song. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the journal Scientific Reports, which has found that Stone Age people in northern Israel used bird bone instruments 12,000 years ago, possibly for communication, hunting or music, and thus challenging the notion of them as primitive. When we think about the Stone Age or Paleolithic period to be exact, we often think of primitive humans using crude tools, but there's more to their lives than that. A lot of the details are missing, but there's a growing theory that they were more advanced than we usually imagine, especially when it comes to music and making instruments. However, finding concrete proof of this is quite rare, particularly because any instruments they made would have had to survive thousands of years. Most of our knowledge about such instrument comes from discoveries in Europe, but experts think that these musical tools were likely used all around the world. A new study has thrown light on this theory. Archaeologists exploring in northern Israel at a site known as Ehan Malhalla made a find of seven ancient aerophones, musical instruments that produce sounds from vibrating air. They were made from bird bones, perforated in a specific way to make them work like whistles. By analysing the tools using taphonomic, i.e. the study of how organisms decay and fossilise, experimental and acoustical methods, the researchers pieced together their physical attributes, usage, preservation conditions, functions and sound properties. This holistic approach provided a detailed view of their purpose and context in the ancient world, demonstrating that these instruments were deliberately carved over 12,000 years ago. They could make a range of sounds like the calls of birds of prey and could have been used in a lot of ways like communicating with each other, attracting animals for hunting and even for making music. This research provides brand new evidence for the use of such unique sound making instruments in the Paleolithic period, adding to our understanding of how diverse and innovative our ancient ancestors really were. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Ancient souls we recollect, crude tools in hand, roughened faces, primitive lives. Yet beneath our projections, ghosts of music dance like fleeting dreams, an echo of melodies carved from hollowed bone to lie in stillness beneath the stifling dirt. Exhumations reset the tone, a broken window to melodic misheard pasts, where roughened faces tame the air, flattering birds, luring game, and trading worlds. Distant voices in the wind revel once more in song.
In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading Incantation to an Age of Stone by V.R. Lang. Violet Rani, or Bunny Lang, was an American poet, playwright and actress who was born in Boston in 1924 and attended the University of Chicago. She served in the Canadian Women's Army Corps during World War II, later becoming an editor for the Chicago Review and part of the New York School of Poets. Lang published widely in respected literary journals and wrote and starred in two verse dramas, Fire Exit, published in 1952, and I Too Have Lived in Arcadia, published in 1954. She was a founding member of the Poets Theatre in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where both of these plays were performed. She died from Hodgkin's disease in 1956, aged 32. Incantation to an Age of Stone by V. R. Lang Since you can no longer be a stranger, you shall be a city. I shall come, you shall stay, incurious in the noon of day, as your great lizards lie in sleeping in the sun. Since I do not hope to learn a language other than my own, I shall change, you shall sleep, and in hot stone your stillness keep. Then all my other learning will grow far and strange. You, my host, shall cast no shadow nor carry hill, nor lie with meadow, valley or tree, I shall become unknown to giant size and dumb, nor season change what I shall sleeping learn to be. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.